Hi there, it's Marie and welcome to Real Life on the Homestead in Ontario. Today, I'm going to be canning butter and ghee so that it's shelf stable and I can get it out of my freezer. Now, I am going to do two separate videos for this and right here will be which video you're watching and I will link in the description box the other video in case you wanna watch both of them. It's that time of the year where I clear out my freezers of anything that is going to get maybe freezer burn or I need the space because it's that time of year I need space. Um, and I can as much as I am able to. Now the freezer that we keep down by the barn gets unplugged for the winter, so I need to empty that out. I've got bones in there for bone broth, both chicken, duck, pork, beef, those will all get cleared out. So got that um, leaf lard and back fat from pigs that we will be rendering down into lard, both cooking lard and leaf lard, which is amazing for baking. Do a video on that shortly. And of course, we've got some suet, which we will be making into tallow. And as you know, I use tallow in a lot of my creams. I also love to cook with it. So a video will be coming out on that as well. I also store my butter in the freezer, but I always like to have some shelf stable butter and ghee. And the reason being, sometimes the prices just get really jacked up for butter. And I always like to have some on hand. Nothing is easier than grabbing a jar, opening up and you're ready. When it's in the freezer, it is hard and you can't use it right away. So there's advantages to keeping shelf stable butter and ghee. Okay, let's start off with our disclaimer. This is not an approved method, meaning it has never been tested by the powers that be on how safe it is. But we're going to use logic. We are going to remove all the moisture from the butter by heating it up and letting it evaporate. Then, we're going to turn it into an oil, which is what ghee is. It's butter without the milk solids, and it's just going to be a straight oil, making it shelf stable. I will be placing it in hot jars, closing the lid. It will vacuum seal itself, and it's not an issue. But you could actually keep ghee right on your countertop beside your stove, and it's perfectly good because the milk solids have been removed. So why make ghee at all? Why not just use regular butter? Number one, and the most important reason for me is I always want it available. So having ghee and butter on the shelf, I always have some available. The other really amazing thing about ghee is its heat point. It can withstand a lot higher heat than um, butter. So if you're gonna fry up an egg and you throw down some butter, you know the butter starts to turn brown and if you forget it, it actually can burn. Ghee has such a high heat point that it won't happen and you get that flavor. The longer you keep your ghee on the stovetop, the nuttier flavor it will develop. Now. If you let it go too long, it's gonna taste a little stronger, that nutty flavor. You can burn it, so you do need to watch this. But if you do it, like I said, under the 20 minute mark, you're just gonna have a nice buttery flavor with a tiny bit of nuttiness. It's like clarified butter. Clarified butter is basically melting down butter and then removing the fill, um, fat solids from the top. So it's the same thing, but we're gonna have an oil. Remember, this is what I do in my kitchen and you do what you feel safe doing. No worries. Um, if you don't feel comfortable, then you know what, don't do it. Um, buy store-bought ghee and be happy with that. The only thing is the flavor is completely different. Homemade ghee, is so much, so much tastier. 
Making ghee is super, super simple. And I decided I was gonna make a video for you when I've seen so many Facebook posts on how great it is that ghee is now available at Costco. And I see it and it's like, you're getting just over a pound for $18. Uh, when butter's on sale, you can get it for five, $6 a pound. Um, and it takes you less than 20 minutes to make. I don't see the logic. I like to save money. Buy whatever butter you can afford, the best quality you can afford. Now there are grass-fed butters, they're beautiful organic butters, but really you can do a simple butter um, that you just get at the grocery store. Just check your ingredient list. Now I have Gay Lee here, it was on sale, $4.99 a pound, you can't beat that. The ingredients are cream. Nothing wrong with that. Um, there's no additives. There's This is unsalted. So, of course, there's no salt. The salted one has salt added. Um, but for making ghee and butter, I find if you want a creamy texture, unsalted works best. I do make some salted ones. Um, it's a little grainy, but I like the flavor of the salt. So I do keep a few of those on hand. Now, what I do is I just take my butter. It's gonna take a little longer than 20 minutes this time because frozen solid. But I'm gonna do four pounds of butter by placing it in my pan. And I am going to just melt that down. I'm gonna melt down four pounds of butter, which will give me four 500 milliliter jars. I like to use wide mouth because they're easier to access. But right now, I'm just gonna put this uh, melting down and come back and show you where we go from here. So you can see our butter is starting to melt pretty nicely. It's been about actually four or five minutes since I put the frozen butter in here. Oh, and let me explain to you something I like to do. This is a personal preference. I'm kind of picky about it. I have one spoon that I use for when I make ghee and butter because I don't want any flavors um, that aren't welcome into my butter. And I actually write on here, you see that? Butter. This is my butter spoon and I keep it separate so that when I'm making ghee and butter, I know that I'm using it um, uncontaminated. Let's put it that way. We are now at the 10 minute mark. And when I stir now, I don't touch the bottom of the pan. I want any milk solids that are down there to stay stuck to the pan. But I do um, move this around regularly just to make sure that um, I am seeing what I want to see, which is the oil separating from the milk solids. You see the milk solids up here? As this cooks, and I will be stirring but not touching the bottom, these solids will cook down and fall to the bottom of the pan, and this will become a clear oil. I don't um, skim and remove it like some people do. I don't find that's necessary because the idea is those milk solids will cook and, um, like I said, fall to the bottom of the pot. But this is coming nicely. It's still very creamy, which means we have a little bit to go. I have this on a, I'd say medium low heat. Um, you could uh, bring up the heat higher, but keep an eye on it because you do not want this to burn. As you can see, my butter now looks more like an oil rather than a butter. It's not as creamy looking and you see that foam is no longer bright white. It's now turning into a golden color. This is what we're looking for. We are at the 15 minute mark right now. And I am just gonna let this go a tiny bit more. And then I'm gonna shut off the flame, let it settle down and get it into jars. As you can see, all the milk solids are gone. They, this is just the oil 
all the milk solids have gone to the bottom of the pot. I am using cast iron, so the heat will remain on here. I'm at the 18 minute mark, so I am shutting off the heat and the residual heat from my pot will continue to brown this butter, but not allow it to burn. Look how golden beautiful this is now that it's settled down. This is exactly 20 minutes. Folks, this is all it took, 20 minutes. I like to use a little strainer such as this just to catch a little bit of that foam. Now you don't have to do this. I prefer to take one jar out of the oven at a time, just to ensure that they are nice and hot. And I like to use the wide mouth because I just find it's easier access afterward. A metal funnel kind of makes sense right now because everything is so hot. And I am just going to ladle my ghee into my jars because I have a very hot oil and a hot jar, everything is good. If I was putting hot oil into cold jars, the chances of them cracking would be huge. As well, if I had put it on a cold counter, I'm also risking at that point. Now, let me see if I can bring you in here just so that you can see how beautiful golden that color is. Trying to keep my camera well adjusted so I can work, but you can also see. This is so simple. You're smart enough. You can do this. You can end up with economical, beautifully tasting ghee that you've made at home. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Just going to place that aside. And I am just going to use my tiny little ladle to just remove that little bit of foam. And you don't have to do this. This is just me being picky. I'm going to top it up with what I just removed. And I put my lid on right away. Don't touch that jar. It's friggin' hot. I close this. I just let it sit on the counter, and this is beautiful, beautiful homemade ghee. Something I hadn't mentioned is if you are doing several jars, and let's say you did get your rims a little greasy and you want to make sure that everything is going to seal, wipe them down with some vinegar, but be super careful not to contaminate your ghee with the vinegar. Just wipe it on the outside very carefully and then place your lid on there. When I get to the bottom of my pot, I add a strainer to my funnel, and then I take my pot and pour it into a jar, which I will be using first. It's gonna be a lot darker in color, and as you can see, there's a lot of those milk solids in the bottom of the pot. As you can see, it does have a much darker color than the other ones, but this is very, very flavorful for frying up some vegetables. And see, there's those milk solids at the bottom of the pot. What I'm going to do is scrape those and throw them in with the chicken feed, and they love that as a treat. Well, friends, here we have it. Four pounds of butter has resulted in three pints or three 500 milliliter jars. Oh, did you hear that? That was one popping. And a half pint, uh, basically a 250 milliliter jar, which I will be using first. Folks, this is super simple. Look how beautiful this is. Just gorgeous. You can do this, you're smart enough. Go out, make some ghee, and I'm gonna clean up my pot and get ready for my video on how to make shelf-stable butter. Thanks for joining me. Make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and stay tuned for the next video on shelf-stable butter.